Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Niantic Community Church, where no matter who you are and no matter where you are on your life's journey, you're welcome here. Um, maybe you can have the air conditioning turned off. Everyone say, oh, I know. I want to say, say a special welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom, to those who find us on YouTube, who are watching on Facebook. Good morning. If you are in the sanctuary and you have a red friendship pad near you, can you find time to fill that out this morning? No. <laughs> And while we're waiting for that to happen, do you have an announcement, Frank? Yeah. Um, wanted to mention the altar flowers are given today in honor of Catherine and John Vincent's children. Thank you for those. Our mission trip folks got uh, back late on Friday night. And unfortunately now over half of them have COVID and Julia included. So we're going to pray for them later in this worship service. It's not the way they hoped or planned for the mission trip to turn out, but it's the way it did turn out. Uh, so we'll pray for them later in the worship service. Frank, do you want to come forward if you're ready? Everyone say, welcome, Frank. Good morning. Uh, hey, good morning. So I'm going to make the announcement there will be a hybrid congregational meeting next Sunday in the, after the worship service starting at 10.30. And the agenda will go out um, early this week. And uh, the next item is uh, potluck dinner. Well, we're gonna have one on the 16th, um, which is a Saturday, starting at five um, to set up the goodies and uh, start eating at 5.30. Um, so uh, there's a sign up in the back, then also there will be sign up uh, in the dining room. So please come down for coffee hour. There are a lot of goodies and John Parker make enough coffee. So please, <laughs> we're tired of throwing them away. So. <laughs> and uh, Sue Smith's going to make an announcement regarding uh, some of the Good morning. Um, the Niana Community Church is bringing back the summer suppers. After a two-year pause, our church will host two summer suppers this year. The dates are Tuesday, July 26, and Tuesday, August 16. Um, it's going to be in the dining room inside only with the AC on. Um, the times will be, we'll have two seatings, 5.30 is the first one and 6.30 is, will be the second one. And it's, the menu's changed a little bit. We're going to have the turkey breast, mashed potatoes, stuffing, gravy, green beans, cranberry sauce, rolls and butter, and desserts, pies. Um, the drinks, we're gonna have coffee, iced tea, and water. And the price is the same. It's gonna be $12 per person in cash only. And we're holding the 2019 prices, um, but we're not going to have the roast beef this year. Um, the tickets are limited, 120 um, in the dining in and 40 takeouts. Um, tickets may be purchased on the day of the event or in advance at the church office Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Um, I need pies. And sign up is going to be downstairs. I need more help um, for volunteers. Thank you. I feel like we wanted to cheer for pies, so let's do that. Yay, pie. Yay. Well, on that note, um, let's turn to one another. What is your favorite kind of pie, if you like pie? Also, please wish the peace of Christ to each other. Minus pecan. Now your turn. And don't forget the peace, the peace.
And if you're on Zoom, you can note your favorite kind of pie as well. With that important business coming to a close, how many people do we have in here who like pumpkin or apple the best? Okay. How about cream pies, pecan pies? Okay, what did I miss? Oh, yeah, berries. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. What'd you say? Blueberries, strawberries, with or without? Ooh, you don't mess around. Karen's pie has bourbon in it, so <laughs> don't mess around. Someone on Zoom says, all pies work for me. Sounds about right. Let's uh, close our eyes if we'd like to. Take a deep breath this morning. It is a beautiful morning. As you breathe in, breathe in the love, the light, and the hope of God. As you breathe out, let go of any stress, tension, fear, worry, Let God take care of it. So opening your eyes, you can stand as you are able or willing to. And together we will say the call to worship, your part is in bold. God, you enjoy teaching all who are open. My eyes are ever on you, beloved. May we together with the angels and the company of heaven. Amen. You can find your red hymnal, 405, Seek Ye First. can come forward. Maddie, you're here. Yay. Ocean, do you want to come forward and keep her company? <laughs> Not really, but she's doing it. Oh, your knee is stiff. Oh, dear. You're going to sit on that. Okay, that's good. You can sit right next. There we go. Well, how are you? How are you two today? Good. 
Hey, Mary. Maddie, what was your favorite kind of pie? Mm, apple pie. Apple pie, mm-hmm. With ice cream or without? With ice cream. Without, obviously. <laughs> Silly question. Ocean, what about you? Berry. Berry, just any old berry? Sometimes mixed berries. And Mary, what's your favorite? Lemon meringue. That's the one pie we didn't mention. Lemon meringue pie. That's a really good one. That's my sister's favorite, too. It really is. Well, I have a common household item here. Does anyone know what this is? It's a safety pin. That's right. And Ocean, you think of it as a quilting pin. Mm-hmm. So what, right? So what, what can you do with a safety pin? Mm -hmm. Oh, you use it to pin your keys to your pants, right? A much bigger one, probably. <laughs> no? Oh my goodness, okay. I'd be interested to see how you could pull that out. Do you know what to do with this, Maddie? Have you ever seen this before? No? Do you see though, does it look like it possibly could be dangerous? How so? Um, a little so. A little so. <laughs> it's got this sharp, little sharp edge there, right? Yeah, has anyone ever poked themselves with something sharp? And you try not to get blood on the quilt. <laughs> you sound like my kind of crafter, Ocean. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So sometimes we poke ourselves with um, sharp things. There's grandma. And then we need what? If you start to bleed, what do you need? You need a Band-Aid, right? Mm-hmm. Let me put this down for a second. And so, but what do we say before we need the Band-Aid? Usually if we poke ourselves or do something. Yeah, is that what you say? Do you, anyone say, ouch? You say cat, that was not nice. <laughs> I know cats could be like that, right? But we say, ouch, and then. You get bandage on. Yeah, you get a Band-Aid, John. Let's see if I can actually get this out. First, you have to take it out of the package. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see something? Sure, I'll see some. Did you get a, a little owie? Oh my goodness. Oh, Maddie, how did you do that? me over bleeding the dog ran you over and so that made you bleed oh my goodness these animals <laughs> and <laughs> maddie <laughs> they did run so fast maddie what kind of um band-aid did you have i saw what did i see on that band-aid unicorn unicorns of course those are the best well this example is not working out so well because i can't, can't can't get this band-aid off <laughs> ocean you want to help me there we go oh mary okay how about you try this one, Mary? So, sure. There we go. Thank you, Maddie. That's lovely. So if we get, if we get hurt, we say, ouch, and then we get a Band-Aid. What if we see someone else who's gotten hurt? Me. Yeah? What if you see somebody who gets hurt, Maddie? Me. One of your friends who trips and falls in the playground? Yeah. Have you ever seen that happen? Mm -mm. You haven't. Oh, my goodness. Only you get into accidents, huh? Yeah, aren't they cool? So if you ever saw someone who got hurt and they said, ouch, what could you do? We can put on a bandage. You could put on a bandage. That's right. But before we put on a bandage, we have to wash it. Yes, absolutely. Appropriate hygiene is always good. So pretend that I have, um, that I got an owie right there. You gonna put the Band-Aid on? That's sticky. That. <laughs> it's sticky. It is kind of sticky. It's not where I got an owie, but it's fine. <laughs> you know what, that made me feel better, Maddie. That really made me feel better. So we all feel joy, right? Yeah. Does everyone feel pain too? Most everyone feels pain, right? There's pain you can see, right? That's on your knee. And there's pain that you can't see always, right? Yeah. yeah. You ever feel sad? Yeah, I cried. You cried? Yeah. When did you cry last? 
Um, when I when I bleed super bad, I cry all the time. Yeah, when you when yeah you cry all the time when you get hurt. Yeah. Sometimes when I fall a little bit, I don't cry. I just laugh. Oh, and guess what? Big enough hurt. Ryan ran up my stair at my house. He twisted his ankle when he fell down. Oh, no. Yeah. Did he say ouch? No, he no he laughed. He laughed. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. He laughed. Yeah. yeah he did. Well, some of us, when we are in pain, can laugh too, and that helps, right? Maybe we should do that more often. So that's the way God is with us when we're sad, when we've scraped our knees. God puts a bandage on, sometimes literally, but sometimes in our hearts, and we can do the same for others, right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's pray. And uh, we'll do a repeat after me prayer. Loving God, we all feel joy. We all experience pain. We're not so different from each other. Where it matters, we are the same. So help us to remember that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. If you want a Band-Aid somewhere random, you can have that. Maddie, where do you get those unicorn Band-Aids? I love them. Oh, you did? Okay, that's nice. Okay. We'll see you later, all. So M Maddie will be preaching in five years. <laughs> In my last congregation, there was a little girl who used to pretend to be Pastor Stephanie, and she would stand in the pulpit after worship. And her main purpose was that she wanted to speak so that everyone would listen to her. That's what being a preacher, she thought, meant. All right. So the scripture reading for this Sunday is from Luke 10. Verses 25 to 37, this is a very familiar story to you. But notice the setup. Notice that Jesus tells this parable that we all know after a series of questions by a scribe. So just then a lawyer or a scribe stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? So Jesus replied by telling this parable. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. And now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever you spend. 
So which of these three, Jesus asks the scribe, do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The scribe says, he can't even say the word Samaritan. He says, the one who showed him mercy. So Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So may we hear in these words a familiar story and also a message that speaks to us in this time and in this place. And now shall we also pray to hear a good word from my words and also from your own reflections, your own sense of the Holy Spirit moving within you. Let's pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of us, may they give you joy, O oh God, you who strengthen us day by day, and you who lead us day by day into new and abundant life. Amen. Well, the scripture is so famous or at least the parable is that it's become a shorthand. Most people know what a good Samaritan is, right? Whether you've read this story or not. And of course, there are even good Samaritan laws that protect those who help strangers in emergencies. But is the message of this parable as simple as, be helpful when you come across those in trouble? Or as one scholar put it, was Jesus just giving us a parable to make us feel guilty when we ignore a homeless person? Is that the point of this parable? So whatever the intention of this parable might be, I hope we know Jesus well enough to guess that invoking guilt is usually not his intended purpose. Because guilt paralyzes us, right? I think that Jesus hopes for something else. So as he usually does, Jesus tells this parable in a specific context. He's approached by what the text translates as a lawyer, but we should not think of John Grisham. This isn't a lawyer, really. This is, in fact, a religious scholar whose job it is, is to study the Torah and help his community live according to its precepts. This man is a theologian, a respected member of his community, and whatever his motivations for approaching Jesus, he is well within his rights to question Jesus about their shared sacred text and tradition. This is what it meant to be Jewish. I think it's what it still means to be Jewish, which is to argue about scripture. That's all they're doing here is arguing about scripture. So as we're about to see, Jesus can debate with the best of them and see if you can catch what his trick is. See if, if you can see his strategy. So in other places in the Gospels, Jesus is asked some version of this question. What do you think the gist of our tradition is? If you had to summarize the Mosaic Law or the most important parts of the Mosaic Law, how would you do that? And of course, here also is a similar question. What do I have to do, the scribe asks, to inherit eternal life? And here's his strategy. Jesus being Jesus answers most questions with a question. So essentially he says, well, you read the text for a living. I know you've got a degree on the wall. What do you read there? You tell me. And of course the scribe knows exactly where to pull from, what to quote, which is a mashup of verses from Deuteronomy and Leviticus, he quotes, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Mic drop. Right? A beautiful answer. Who could disagree with that? And Jesus says as much, well, you've given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But something in the scribe is dissatisfied with the answer. Maybe he wants to trip Jesus up. Maybe he's genuinely curious. 
The text says he wants to justify himself. How many of you have tried to justify yourself in the middle of an argument? Right? <laughs> or maybe he's just doing what all of us do, which is to drill down into the text to get to two specifics. So he asks Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Give me a definition. Lay it out for me. And Jesus being Jesus doesn't give him a definition. Instead, he tells a story. So good stories are full of surprises, right? A twist usually at the end that you didn't see coming. And this story, the story of the Good Samaritan, as it is known, has one big surprise at the center. Since we don't live in Jesus' time or place, we might miss how radical and jaw-dropping that surprise must have been. As it goes, it's a pretty straightforward story that a man, probably Jewish, given Jesus' audience, travels from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as it so often happened, he was beset by robbers on the road. People would have known, if, this is a very common occurrence at the time, sadly. So in the story, they stripped him of everything they had, they beat him, and they basically leave him to die in the ditch. Everybody who was listening probably knew someone that this had happened to. So the poor man has three opportunities to be rescued. That's the setup of a good joke, too. One, two, three, right? It's a good story. So by chance, Jesus says, a priest travels the same road, and when he sees the man, what do we expect him to do? To help. But instead, he passes by. Similarly, Levite, another religious guy, seeing the poor man in the ditch, sees the man, what do we expect him to do? Help. And then he passes by. And now here's the surprise twist. Except, you know, we've heard the story so often it doesn't register with us, but the twist is the third man who sees this poor guy in the ditch, right? He is none other than Hold on to everything you've got. He's a Samaritan. I'm waiting for your gasps. There you go. Oh, that's good. You did it really well. Now, a Samaritan is probably not your enemy or mine, right? Probably not. But a Samaritan was a historical enemy to the Jewish people. And so when he passes by, he sees this poor Jewish man in the ditch and reaches out to help him. And he goes way, way, way beyond that. He bandages the wounds. He puts him on his own animal. He transports the man to an inn and then pays the innkeeper for the trouble. In short, he goes above and beyond to help someone that he would have considered an enemy, not just a stranger, not just somebody who got wounded or stranded on the side of the road, but an actual enemy. The Samaritans were so hated that when Jesus finishes this story, he asks the scribe, who was the neighbor? And the scribe can't even say the word Samaritan. He says the one who showed him mercy. And then, of course, Jesus says, well, go and do likewise. Easy peasy. Simple. I want to say another word about the Samaritans. They were people who also believed that they were inheritors of the Mosaic Law. They were not people who had a different substantial tradition than the Jewish people. They were people who shared a lot in common with the Jewish people at that time. And that tells you why conflicts among people who have a lot in common are the fiercest. Are family fights the worst? You bet. This is a family conflict. The poor scribe can't even say the word Samaritan. So the point of the parable, perhaps we might say, is not simply to do acts of kindness to strangers, as important as that might be. One point to the parable that I'm hearing today 
is to reconsider who are our enemies. Most of us don't think in terms of enemies anymore, at least I don't. But I think that we do have people that we place in the category of other, of other. It's been said, and I think it's true, and also it's magnified by our media, that our country is deeply divided, or at least that's what people say. Our politics are intense right now, and they have been. And I have found myself saying, in the spirit of honesty and humility, things like, well, I just don't know what to do with those people. And I've said worse things, but this is for church. In other words, I have said things like that about people I disagree with. But in point of fact, I am related to some of those people. Family fights are the worst. I grew up in church with those people, some of them. And as much as I would like to draw lines of stark black and white, once I put human faces, stories, and kindnesses to those folks, they become too real for me just to dismiss them as those Our country and collective has othered a lot of people over the centuries. Immigrants, people of color, women, LGBTQIA plus folks, native folks, the list goes on and it goes on. And this is why I think we need this message of the Good Samaritan. It's not just about helping people who get stranded on the side of the road. The story of the Good Samaritan is about the fact that our categories for our fellow humans are too rigid, too defined, and our enemies, our others, inconveniently and always turn out to be just as human as we are. Rat. I'm not sure that COVID times has made us more kind. In fact, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and the number of people resigning from health care and education. I saw something about vet techs leaving the field and veterinarians as well, just because people have been so nasty. I'm not sure that COVID times have made us more kind. In fact, there's a lot of evidence it's made us less kind. But I understand why, because we have been so stressed. We have been isolated from each other, and we have not been spared the fire, literally and figuratively, that is around us. And the problems of our world seem to be getting worse and worse. Things feel like they're falling apart, and some may be. But a world in trouble needs more kindness, not less. And so I wonder if, instead of seeing ourselves always as the valiant good Samaritan, the hero or heroine of the story, if we might take a moment to remember a few times in our lives when we have been the guy in the ditch. I have my times. Do you have yours? I remember the time when I messed up my taxes because clergy taxes are a bear. And my friends, without prompting at all, without me even asking, lent for me a fairly significant amount of money when I needed it the most. I was too embarrassed to ask my family and they stepped in. I remember the time when I was in seminary, sick as a dog, and a person I barely knew came over to my dorm with crackers and soup and kept me company while I coughed. The truth is, some of us now and some of us in the past have lived paycheck to paycheck. The truth is we are, as my therapist puts it, Walking vulnerability. That's what it means to be human. Walking vulnerability. It is entitlement 
that makes us less kind. It is the feeling or the fear that we must have it all figured out that makes us less kind. It is an estrangement from the fact of our mutual vulnerability that makes kindness feel like a luxury, but kindness is not a luxury. Kindness is everything that counts. So how do we love God? It's funny, you know, the scribe asked the question sarcastically or genuinely, it's hard to tell, maybe a little bit of both. But the question stands, how do we love God? How do we love our neighbors as ourselves in very, very challenging times? Maybe it starts with a small awareness and also acceptance of our own vulnerability. We fight so hard not to be vulnerable, but like I said, there's not one person who isn't vulnerable. So start with yourself, where are you vulnerable? And then you can branch out. Notice the vulnerability of a bird on a tree limb. Notice the vulnerability of a baby with that soft downy hair. Notice the vulnerability of a student preparing for her first year of college, a woman facing the end of her life, a couple saying, I do a congregation saying goodbye to its pastor. All the good things that we love and all of the things that we're terrified of begin and end with vulnerability. So since we are all in the same boat, we can afford to be kind. We can afford to be kind. And then, of course, Jesus said, then we live. Then we live. Let the people say, amen. amen. This is a time when I mention that our offering plates will be coming around. There's a PayPal link in the Zoom box. And of course, there's lots of ways to give. Before we start with the music, let's close our eyes. <clears throat> Sermons can go in one ear and out the other, and that's fine. But maybe there was a good word for you that you want to saturate yourself with a little bit. So let's just take a pause. What are you hearing from God? And let the people say, Amen. Amen. A certain man one day did go down to Jericho, fallen among thieves along the way. They stripped him and they fled, leaving him for dead, lying on the side of the road. And then the priest came passing by, he crossed over to the other side. Then the Levite came and he did just the same. When the Samaritan heard his cry, he just could not pass by. 
He dressed his wounds and he carried him to the nearest inn. Well, he reached down, he reached down. He got right there on the ground. He reached down, he reached down, and he touched the pain. He paid the keeper the amount that was due. If you need more, I'm good for that too. He reached down, he reached down, and he touched the pain. And then the scribes and the Pharisees brought the adulterers in for Jesus to see. Lord, she sinned, and now the law says she must be stoned. There's a one of you that's without sin Said you can cast the first stone in One by one they left Leaving Jesus and the woman alone Well, he reached down, he reached down He got right there on the ground He reached down, he reached down And he touched the pain well, no accusers are left that I see, and woman, neither do I condemn thee. He reached down, he reached down, and he touched the pain. In the book, well, a story got told about a traveler at the end of life's road at the gates of the kingdom and the master says come on in for I was hungry and you gave me meat I was cold you put shoes on my feet when I was in prison there was you who come to see about me well you reach down you reach down you got right there on the You did it to the least of these He said you were doing it unto me You reached down, you reached down And you touched the pain Well, he reached down, he reached down And he touched the pain He said now you reach down You reach down and touch the pain And in this time, we'll take prayer requests. We have one from Ellen. Pray for peace throughout the world, especially Ukraine. Thank you, Ellen. Amen. From Wendy and Bob, for Marge and Dick, for health and healing for Marge. Thank you. Thank you both. What else would we like to pray for this morning? Yeah, Terry. Oh. 
prayers for Meg as as Jim faces the end of his life. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Marianne. Okay. So we're going to be praying for Ocean's friend, Marianne, who fell and broke her neck in two places. We're thanking God that she's out of the ICU and we're praying for her recovery. Thank you. Marsha is lifting up a prayer for Dave, who is diagnosed with liver cancer. Thank you, Marsha. Yeah, Kent, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We're continuing to pray for both of you as you grieve for your son, Tom, who passed away a few weeks ago. And our hearts are with you and our prayers. Thank you. Go for it, Ro. Thank you. Yeah. Prayers for Mary Wasong as she um, faces the end of her life, the last adventure, as she calls it, and for all who love and care for her. Thank you. Georgie, did I see your yes, hand? Celebration for Hal's birthday yesterday. Yes. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're celebrating Hal's birthday. Hal, I think your big birthday in quotation marks was last year. Is that right? OK, all right. So yes, <laughs> but still, but happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, Stephanie. Karen, when is your birthday? Tuesday, 75. 75 on Tuesday. Thanks for owning it, Karen. <laughs> That's wonderful. Happy, happy birthday. Thank you. That's exciting, Verna. Wow, that's wonderful. So we're, we're giving thanks for your younger sister's birthday. Um, every birthday is significant. And also for a family member who is celebrating 15 years of sobriety. That's huge. That's huge. Thank you so much, Verna. That's wonderful. Uh, we're praying for our governing board meeting today to find a path forward. We're celebrating prayers. Sandy's lifting up. Prayers for um, celebration after successful wrist surgery and patient healing, as she puts it. That seems about right. Carolyn. Okay, we're going to be praying for Carolyn's friend Talia and her family as they're going through some important transitions. Thank you, Carolyn. Did I miss anybody? Well, let's take a deep breath. Let's have a little bit of quiet. And if you're in a thinking kind of mode, see if you can let go of some of your thoughts. Maybe you want to let go of your to do list. Maybe you want to give to God already some of the people that we've prayed for. Maybe you just like to feel God's presence in a deeper, in a fuller way. And loving God, you enjoy teaching all who are open. All of us who choose to live in greater and greater truth. Our eyes are in all kinds of places, loving God. And so we ask that you keep our feet from stumbling along the way. So we lift up those this morning 
in need of comfort in their time of grief. We ask that you give those who are grieving a strong sense of your presence, that they might find the hard and wild edges of grief to be softer and to be full of love. We pray, God, in your mercy, to hear our prayers. God, you find us when we are in pain. You reach down right there on the ground where we live. And so we pray for all those in need of healing, emotional, spiritual, physical, And we pray, God, in your mercy, to hear our prayers. God, sometimes we need to laugh when we fall down. Sometimes we need to remember joy when we're in the midst of sorrow. So we ask that sometimes when we fall, we might laugh because we can get back up again. We're resilient. That's part of our human nature too. So God, may we remember to laugh. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, I don't know where to start with the needs of the world. There's so many, they're so big, they're just overwhelming. So here again, God, we are vulnerable. We're not powerless, but we're vulnerable. And since Jesus is at the heart of our faith, Jesus who made himself vulnerable. We pray God in your mercy to hear our prayers. And finally, God, we say our own names for whatever our needs and desires might be today. We say together, Stephanie. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Friends, God is always calling our names, always speaking words of comfort, reminding us to laugh, reminding us that we're resilient, reminding us to ask for help when we need it. So let's stand as we are able and sing the summons.
us all move and live and grow in you and you in me. Let the people say amen. 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 And now may the peace of Christ be with each one of you and also with you. Please pass the peace of Christ to your neighbors. Peace of Christ. 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 <laughs> and now with your hands over your hearts, if you'd like to, you can close your eyes. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you in your vulnerability and give you peace. May God look upon you with kindness and give you hope for each and every day of your precious life. Amen. Amen. Amen.